On a recent trip to DHS, I walked around the quad and recorded my walk from the sky. How would you describe my walk? I mean, I walked a lot, but did I get very far? Well, let's find out the different ways we can describe motion using distance and displacement. Hey everybody, Mr. White here. We're going to talk distance and displacement, uh, two ways that we can describe motion. Uh, before we do that though, there are two types of values that we need to talk about, uh, which are pretty quick but really important in regards to physics and the different values that physics uses. Um, and those are scalar and vector values. Um, so scalar values tell you the how much or a magnitude. We refer to that how much is a magnitude. Um, so for example, I might tell you I went 50 miles and that tells you how far I went, so the how much, but it really doesn't tell you any more than that. You don't know where I went. Vector values have an additional piece of information. They tell you a direction as well. So I might say 50 miles north and that tells you not only how far I went, but it also tells you the direction that I went in as well, which is a lot more useful. So pause this if you'd like to write this chart down, um, but scalar and vector values are really important and it is really important to know the basic difference that scalar values only provide a magnitude, vector values provide a magnitude and a direction. So when we use vectors, we can use them in different ways. We could just simply state them uh, by saying I traveled five meters south and then I traveled two meters north. So there you have my distance and you also have my direction. Um, if you want to draw them, you would use arrows. And so we know that arrows point in a particular direction. So there's our directional component. Um, the length of the arrows is actually what tells us magnitude in this case. So a longer arrow has a greater magnitude and a shorter arrow has a lesser magnitude. Uh, so for example, five meters south is represented by the blue arrow pointing downwards and two meters north is pointing upwards uh, represented by the red arrow and the red arrow is much shorter pointing in the opposite direction. Now if we're going to use these numbers in calculation we can represent the magnitude by a number of course but the direction is represented by a positive or negative symbol uh, and so you'll usually be instructed on what means what so for example if positive meant up uh, then you would be told that and you could assume that negative means down or if positive means right negative would mean left um, and those are what tell you the direction the number tells you the magnitude now it's really important that you understand that positive and negative do not imply that a number is bigger than another positive and negative symbols are used for directional components so whereas the number tells you the magnitude positive and negative tells you the direction so for example, positive five meters and negative five meters are both five meters in length. It's just positive five meters is going in one direction, negative five meters is going in another direction. All right, so let's look at a family circus cartoon where Billy was supposed to catch the mailman, but Billy took a really long path to get out there and missed the mailman. So we're gonna try to describe his motion in different ways, um, starting with basically how far Billy went. So if we look at Billy's path, we can see it's a very squiggly path through the house. Um, and it's, I overlaid a green line so it's easier to see. Um, and we can describe the distance that Billy traveled by taking that green line and stretching it out and measuring it. So basically distance is uh, how far did the object go? How far did Billy's shoes have to walk uh, in order to get from start to finish? That's the distance. That Billy traveled. Now distance is not a vector. It tells us a distance but not a direction. Um, so again that is a scalar value not a vector. Um, it's only giving us the magnitude or the how much did Billy have to walk? How far? We can also look at Billy's travel in regards to his different positions. Um, so position is a vector value. Position is the location of an object relative to the origin. So at any given time I can pick a point and those points are red on this uh, graphic here um, and those are different positions. And notice that we look and uh, describe position um, based on its direction and distance from the origin as the bird flies. It's not the path but it's a straight line from the origin. Now the third aspect that we're looking at, displacement, is a little tricky because it's very closely related to position. So displacement 
um, is the difference between uh, an object's position at from one time to another. So if I look at one position and I look at another position, the displacement would be represented by the purple arrow between those two positions. Um, typically, we will be looking at displacement as total displacement from the start point to the end point. So Billy's total displacement is shown by the large purple arrow going from the origin, where he's standing in, I guess, the kitchen or living room, uh, all the way to the mailbox. And that is also as the bird flies as well. So displacement is starting position to ending position as the bird flies. And that is very much different than distance. Let's take a look at a real world example. I went to Dublin High School and walked around the quad and filmed myself from the sky. That's me there at the origin. And you're going to notice two lines following me. One represents the distance I've traveled and the other is my displacement from the origin. Notice that the displacement line is a straight line from the origin to my position at any given time. And that's what displacement is. I'm comparing two positions. Now watch what happens to my displacement when I get back to the origin. It's gone. Now the distance I traveled is the length of the entire path there shown with the green line. But my displacement is zero. The reason is my starting position is also my ending position, so there is no technical change in positions when comparing those two points. If you think about it, we could say that our displacement is always zero if we compare our positions from when we wake up to when we go to sleep. Obviously you've traveled around throughout the day, but overall your displacement is zero if you compare positions from the start of the day and the end of the day, which is probably your bed. We've seen how different distance and displacement are, but is it possible for the distance an object travels to be equal to the amount that it's displaced from the origin? Let's take a look at this example. When I walk from the center of the quad to the top of the quad, notice that the distance that I traveled is equal to the amount that I am displaced from the origin. So yes, in this case, the amount of displacement is equal to the distance that I traveled. Let's do one more example. In this case, I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to walk down the right spoke. I'm going to circle around this patch of grass. I'm going to come down the center spoke. I'm going to go back to the origin, and then I'm going to go up the right spoke one more time. Now notice my distance traveled is the triangular path plus one extra arm, but my displacement is simply the straight line from the origin to my ending point. Displacement ignores the entire rest of the trip. Remember, displacement only cares about the two positions that you are comparing. In this case, my starting position at the origin and my ending position where I stopped. Let me leave you with this. We've seen that the distance traveled can be greater than or equal to the amount of displacement. Is it possible for distance to be less than displacement? Think about it. And as always, if you need help, please ask. Thanks for watching.